Hey there guys, welcome back to Hersey Games and welcome back to the QPR career mode. If you're not all nice and caught up, go check out the playlist, get yourself caught up and then of course welcome to today's episode. Today, cracking on with the series, but most importantly, we are in the January transfer window. We haven't got the craziest amount of cash to splash in eighth place as things sit right now. Uh, but a lot of today is going to be looking at transfers and things. So probably won't get through four matches today. It might be two or three, depending on how the uh, general transfers and stuff go. Uh, but as you can see, we've got three million pounds in the transfer budget. And as much as I'd love three million pounds in my pocket, it's not very much for a championship side to wheel and deal with. Uh, we're going to start off just by looking at our squad and really going through who to sell. Now, obviously, first thing really to notice, we do have five goalkeepers, Begovic, Archer, Walsh, Mahoney out on loan and Labrovic. Now, I am going to make a bit of an executive decision here. If somebody comes in for Begovic, I'm going to accept it. Um, but the chances are he'll join on a pre-contract and go um, because he's only got six months left. So on that basis, assuming that Begovic will still be in the club, regardless of whether he agrees a deal now or not, I'm going to sell Jordan Archer. Nothing against him. He's just not going to get any minutes for us. And worst case scenario, we do also have Joe Walsh to come in as our reserve keeper. 58 rated granted isn't fantastic, but we do have Labrovic as our main man at the moment. Uh, going into the fullbacks, you can see Larketch is our only recognized left back. We do obviously have Kenneth Powell as well, but at the moment he's a left mid and reconverting back. Um, so squad depth isn't great for fullbacks. <coughs> into the center backs uh, i'd already mentioned that morgan fox is going to be transfer listed in fact i've already done that so he is going to be on his way out um, and i'm kind of tempted to loan list out michael holmes but instead i'm going to hope that we can get kleber cabral out on a loan uh, and holmes can stay in this sort of rotation spot he's in right now um, with the intention of probably then going and being um loaned next season potentially right backs we have drew and ozzy i don't really think we can afford to let either of them go at the moment uh callback i think i had oh i was gonna say i thought i had transfer listed but i haven't yet but he is going to be transfer listed purely because he is 34 and he isn't in the starting team might as well try and get some pennies from if i can uh field obviously staying now we get into our center mid situation here um, I'm going to loan out Aroha. I quite like Aroha, and I think he's got a good bit of talent ahead of him. So I'm going to loan him out. Uh, Duke McKenna, I'll be honest with you, I don't see him getting into the team very much. Just doesn't really suit what we've got. And I think we've got better players in different positions. So I'm going to sell Duke McKenna. Nothing, again, nothing against Duke McKenna. I quite like him. Um, the sort of bit part pieces he often plays, he does impress me. Uh, started a game the other day, and sadly, I don't think was at his top form. But going to go ahead and sell Stephen Duke McKenna. Um, in regards to our cam situation, we've got a lot going for us here. I'm going to transfer list to Doma. Um, basically the same situation as um, with Begovic, who I am also going to transfer list in the hope, again, that somebody actually pays money for him and we can invest 500k rather than just having to sit on the wages for the whole season but i think it makes a lot of sense to try and loan out Sade, but our depth just isn't there so i'm going to keep hold of Sade. uh obviously chair richards keep them uh loan list out bala 57 rated i'd happily go and see him get some minutes elsewhere um i'm probably going to see i want a loan list park he's 71 rated I want to loan list him. I think it makes sense to do that. Sorry, 71, 61. He's got a plus seven from uh, stuff this season. I'm I'm going to loan list Dexter Park and I'm going to transfer list Charlie Kelman. I, is that crazy? I can get nearly a million for him. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, boys. We're going to sell Charlie Kelman. He doesn't get minutes in real life. He's struggling to get into the team sheet uh, for us as well. Uh, so I'm going to sell Kelman. I'm going to loan list Alfie Lloyd. And I'm also going to loan list Hamzad Kargbo. See if either of them can get a season out anywhere and get some games under their belt. Uh, but that's everyone that's leaving. I'm keeping everyone else either in the club loading or whatever. Everyone else is staying here, not getting rid of anyone. So the plan is going to be, I'm going to start working my way forward. I'll show you guys actually very quickly before we do um, the players that I'm scouting. 
Um, but then we're just going to get into the games and as and when transfers happen, I'll keep you guys in the loop with it. But just to give you a little bit of an idea, you can see I'm looking at a lot of keepers. Now, all of these keepers here uh, on the majority, there's a few that don't, but on the majority, all of these keepers here, Kelleher doesn't, but they've got six months on their contract or less. So my hope is that we'll be able to try and go in and sign them like you can see here with Hennessy, Carrius, but these will be signing for the start of next season. So this this is where we take a bit of a punt and go, right, do we see ourselves getting into playoffs and potentially getting promoted? Because then signing Carrius is a fair deal. But if we don't, then I've got a potentially like sort of 78 rated keeper in the championship. And you could argue, well, he was out of contract. He agreed a deal to go to a championship side. You know, it's happened. But I'm going to scout them all, see who comes back, see what we get. Um, but yeah, I've scouted a, a fair bunch and a good mix as well of like players over 30, players around 30 and a couple of players that are a lot sort of early 20s. So we're going to see what comes back from that. Uh, again, scouting some other people. Uh, Twansway, by the way, signed with um, Ipswich and we scouted him as a player we could potentially go for. But we've got a lot of players still being scouted uh, and we'll see what comes back from these. I was recommended Slattery. Uh, so I'm scouting him as well, but it does say he's too important, so I don't think they're going to be willing to sell him. Uh, but we'll see what money we get, boys, and where we go from there. I'm not going to sign these guys in the free agents pool. They both look pretty good, and you could argue, well, sign him and then sell him, get four mil, but I'm not going to cheese it, boys. We'll, we'll, we'll be legit with this. I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, not going to have any funny business with it, but we'll see what money we get. That, I think, is going to be where we have to sit here, see uh, see where the finances land before we can make any moves. But uh, I imagine there'll be nothing between us and the next game, which is up against Plymouth, so I'll see you there. Okay, up against Plymouth, and I'm fairly sure I ended the last episode talking about the fact that we had a game right around the corner, and it was the Plymouth game. Uh, we've got a few players that are missing because of stamina. Cook and Dykes were both very tired, so Park and Holmes are going to come in, two of our youth system projects or, or uh what well, not projects what's the word i'm looking for i can't remember it's the half past 11 at midnight uh, so it's i'm tired um but we're gonna see if the boys can come in and step up park obviously looking for a move away uh so this is a good chance to maybe show teams what he's about if he has a good game teams might come in for him so uh let's get into it i will also say very sorry um you guys may or may not know i've had this cough for a little while and today i've got a really tickly throat so if i cough in any of these clips i do apologize but uh i'm trying to fight them off so let's bring the first game of the episode to us today a lot of waffle at the start of the episode and i apologize because i know that can always be a little bit of a a weird start to a video but in these career modes i like to keep you guys in the loop of everything that's going on so fingers crossed we can get a nice signing or two in in today's episode potentially a couple of players departing but let's find out they're really focusing in on willock is willock maybe the man of the day let's find out come on you ask Ball with Ilias chair, nice and early here. Going to try and cut inside. Going to try and see a run here from Armstrong. It is a good run. Armstrong's going to belt it from the edge of the box. It's well defended in the end. Wait, have they given a penalty? I think he's tripped Armstrong up as he's gone to shoot. I think one player's blocked it and one player's ended up tripping him up. And I think we've actually been given a penalty here. Just going to just gonna watch it back and confirm it. But that'll be a fantastic start for us here. They have. Yeah, but he's missed it. He's gone straight in through the back of Armstrong. And Sinclair is going to have himself a penalty here. They've given it to Willock to take. You know what? There's been a lot of focus on Willock at the start of this game. So we're going to let Willock step up and take this one. We're going to aim for that top right-hand corner. Chris Willock finds the back of the net. Four minutes in and we do bag the first goal of the game. Very happy with that. It's great to see getting those early goals. And I'm very, very happy with that indeed. Good start there for Chrissy Boy. Well done to Armstrong for winning the penalty. Well done to uh, Chair for holding it up to get that ball through to Sinclair. And well done, um, uh, not Armstrong, Willock for finding the back of the net. 1-0, boys. And I don't think we could have asked for much of a better start there. Got to be careful here. Try and not let them through early on. I have not done a really very good job of keeping them from getting the ball into the box. They're going to play it to the edge of the box. And Labrovic called into action early with a good effort from the edge of the box there. It's been, I'm not going to say it's been end-to-end because -end it's literally been one chance each. So I guess you could argue that is the epitome of end-to-end. -end. But it's been, um, I guess, just a bit of a, it's been like a slow game in the fact of the ball is being shifted around pretty slowly. But effectively, it has to be said by uh, by Plymouth. But let's just, uh, let's just get our foot on the ball a little bit and just ease into the game a bit. Chair, lovely ball over the top of the Armstrong. Going to bring it down. Oh, doesn't quite get the wrong side of Gibson, but was pretty close to it. 
Plymouth bring in numbers forward here. You can see, look, the amount they overload that right-hand side, or their right-hand side, I should say, our left-hand side. Oh, Nabrovic, that's straight at you, mate. Butcher's had 60% of the goal to aim at, and he's kicked it straight at Nabrovic, and he's moved out of the bloody way. Oh, boys, I, I am going to feel like it's a risk letting Begovic go. Look, you could, oh, that's poor from him. But I feel like it's going to be a risk letting Begovic go, knowing how important he has been at times and that Labrovic hasn't necessarily been the most consistent for us. But I'm sticking to my guns here. EA, the fact that they make certain players when they get over a certain age, just they just get terrible within a season, apparently. Uh, it's kind of forced our hand a little bit. But hold on a second here. Park into Armstrong. And Armstrong is going to find a goal himself as well. 2-1. 25 minutes in, boys. And just like that, three goals in the game already. Really lovely hold-up play from Park. I have to say it was a lovely bit of a... Just got the touch. Played the composure. Lovely stuff from Willick to bring it forward. Park, simple pass across. And Armstrong just has to lump that. And it's a lovely finish as well. Right in that top corner. 2-1, boys. 24 minutes gone. Not many highlights that would have been shown as of yet. But most of them are goals. Could be careful here. Kenneth Powell steps in really, really well there to win that ball back. And the lovely little one-touch passes just to bring this ball right forward and Armstrong is finding acres of space in behind this Plymouth defence he's been through three times he scored two of them but all three of them have led to goals it has to be said Sinclair Armstrong I'm a big fan mate I'm a big big fan he's done really really well today so far and we're what 32 minutes into our first game and there's four goals already, three of which have gone to us, which is great. I said I wanted to turn Loftus Road into a fortress. And if we can keep up form like this, maybe, maybe, just maybe that could be a possibility, boys. But I'm absolutely here for this right now. Really, really good. It's felt really good, especially considering we've got a couple of players rotated in. Uh, but Park, Park hasn't felt bad at all. I have to say, Cher and Willock, though, have run the show so far. They have been phenomenal out wide ball into Park. Going to play it off to Willock. Willock now. Going to try and find the ball back to Park. He seems like a big-ish lad. It's, it's not that he's massive, but he seems a little bit tall and a bit stocky. I reckon he's going to be good at getting that ball up to to hold it up. Got to get this ball back, and I've got to try and get it back sooner rather than later. Lovely bit of play there. Right plays it out to Mumba. Mumba being marked here by Ozzy, and uh, it's a very good bit of play from Holmes coming across to help defend as well, but they're just rotating it nicely. They're, they're being calm with possession. Bit of a lapse pass there, but Dazelle can't get onto it. And they've worked it into the box eventually. Oh, Holmes. I've asked for Holmes to go to the man, but he was his stamina thing was all the way down. So I'm holding R1 for him to close down and I mark the run, but it didn't happen because Holmes was knackered. I got a little bit lucky there. Laprovich coming to our aid, but 48 minutes on the clock. Three of the additional two been played. If we get this out, I reckon that'll be half time. That should be all she wrote, ref. It is half time, 3 1, and I'm very, very happy with that so far. Really good performance. It's felt good. It's felt dominant, and that's what we needed, boys. We needed a good, clean, dominant start into the episode today, especially after starting really well last time and then petering off at the end of the episode. Never what you want to see. So it's good to see us actually starting. Uh, strongly again after a bad bit of form. Larkech going to come on for Aussie because he's quite tired. I don't remember when the next game is. I have a feeling it's maybe four days away, so not a full week. But uh, just quick half time. Don't need too much, boys. Just a pat on the back. Well done and keep it up. Uh, and 3 1, boys. Let's, like I said, let's keep it up. Plymouth work the ball out wide here. Bundu plays it into Hardy. They've got the man over there as well. But Clark Salter is going to try and come across and help out with Kenneth Powell. The two of them here stopping this ball into the box. Kenneth Powell, really well done there. Did a really, really good job at not just winning the ball, but then as it was looking like it was potentially going to fall back to the Plymouth player's feet, but keeping it away from him. But Park now, his first chance to probably run through here. Looks out wide and finds chair. The pass back isn't fantastic. I maybe should have tried to chip through ball, just get it over that defender. But... Park, honestly, I'm starting to enjoy what he's doing, man. I'm, I'm still probably on the side of sending him out on loan uh, rather than keeping him here. But good save, Labrovic. Just about. I was going to try and get rid of it, but well done, boys. But I'm enjoying Park so far. If he can go out on loan and get some game time, come back and be a good couple of ratings higher. I think we've got a little player on our hands. Park here, going to try and play this over the top. Lovely ball. Can Armstrong be through for a hat trick? Edge of the box, going to lump it. The keeper's nowhere near it. You have to say he's got to do a little bit better there. But Sinclair Armstrong bags the hat trick. Absolutely things you love to see. He is absolutely in firing form right now. I don't think anything could have stopped the shots he's had today. And again, if I put him on the penalty, he'd have bagged four. But I decided to give it Willock purely because for some reason, 
all of the uh, like the intro stuff was all showing Chris Willock, but keepers maybe not dived fantastically well, but it's still a great strike, boys. It's a lovely goal. It's three. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. It's four one. Plymouth bring it forward here. I've not done a great job of getting in the way and I've not done a very good job of getting rid of it either. Clark sort of plays it straight out to Plymouth. Labrovich gets down well to try and stop the corner or well dump. Well, about 10 minutes left on the clock and I've done my classic boys. A lot of changes. Paul Smith, Richards and Dixon Bonner on for Chair, Dezel and Willock. Just really good performance from both wide players. Willock and Chair getting heavily involved and doing a very good job, both of them, it has to be said. Uh, and Dezel was quite tired. The CDMs have had a relatively quiet day, but I think that's mainly been because every time Plymouth get the ball, they sort of run around in a circle and then look to play it out wide because I keep marking the central passes. So I think that's probably why my CDMs haven't really had much to do today. Plymouth bring it forward again here, just backing off a little bit to try and stop the cross and the options but Labrovich it's not the most convincing at saving I have to be honest he sort of always gets a, like a soft hand to it but he's done enough to keep it out of the goal and that is the main thing here only a couple of minutes left on the clock I'll let you guys stick this out with me here for the end of it but Paul Smith's going to win it try and make a bit of a run ends up having to lay it off to Sinclair Armstrong who himself is going to go for a run runs into a man but that's not going to stop him Sinclair Armstrong is just going to keep powering forward here look at the run from Park can we find Park not quite Scar's going to get back there and block it and that should be everything it is boys 4-1 phenomenal win very very happy with the result it really could have been a lot lot worse uh when they equalized straight away i did panic but a trio of finishes from armstrong just absolutely secures the win massive fair play to him it's great to see him doing well and uh yeah that's a huge huge result boys i'm very happy with that as it says our hat trick hero sinclair armstrong very much helping secure the three points there our next game is in the fa cup round three against Wimbledon uh we probably will end up playing that I'm gonna be honest guys the focus for me definitely is the league this year um I know it's always left a little bit behind for me in my career modes but I'm just not too fussed about the cup right now I'm not I don't think we're in a position as a club to be worrying about both competitions for me focus on the league because we're trying to make sure that um in real life to stay up but right now to try and go up so that for me has got to be our priority so i might do a highlights in the cup i'm not too sure and I, I promise you i won't be doing many highlights i really do promise you that won't be something that stays um it's purely to, because it's happened to fall in the transfer window so we'll see of all the players i said could potentially be leaving sinclair armstrong was not one of them so uh yeah no thank you couple of offers coming in here first of all and a loan for Alfie Lloyd now I'm not going to accept a loan to buy but I will accept a loan so you can go out on loan there and then offer here 480 is actually not a bad initial offer I'm just going to push it a little bit and just say will you accept 520 but I'll have it as a 480 as a fallback if they're not willing to budge plenty of offers flying through now Cargbo with a loan off out to I can't actually remember who what the team was uh AFC Botasani, probably said that wrong, uh, but potentially another loan out there. 480 is what they're sticking with. I'm just going to accept it. I'm not going to mess around too much here. Charlie Kelman, 780,000. Um, that's not a bad little offer. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm going to start the bidding here at 900 and hope to not absolutely shoot myself in the foot. But 800k would actually be a really, really good uh, amount to potentially sign a player either from League One or bottom part of the championship and bring through. And another offer for Sinclair Armstrong. No. Now, as I said, with having quite a lot of things to kind of focus on with the transfers, I am going to play highlights in this one. And as I said, I promise I'm not going to make that a very common theme. It's purely because, A, it's now nearly 12 o'clock at midnight. Uh, that's when 12 o'clock is time, midnight. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure I get this filmed and edited and out on time for Saturday. Uh, but also B, like I say, this is a bit of a different episode because it's heavily focused on the transfers. So I promise you I won't make a common theme of this, but we are going to play highlights. Only change from our usual starting 11 is Coley is in over Armstrong just because he was a little bit tired. But Cook and Dykes are back in and otherwise it's back to our starting 11. So it will be a play highlights. But as I say, and I've said it a thousand times and you're probably already sick of me saying it. It won't be a common theme, okay? I promise this won't happen often because I know it's not everyone's favourite thing and I know they are still a little bit glitchy and bugged and naff. Um, but let's hope that we can see ourselves through the cup. Um, it's another home game. It would be good to keep up the home form. That would be quite nice. And I wouldn't be upset with being in the cup. I think it's just more that our focus is definitely 1,000% the league, especially with the form that we're in. So it would be nice to kind of keep it up 
Um, but let's get into it and let's see how our chances fare, how they treat us today. Let's see what EA have got in store. A crossing opportunity. I can almost guarantee you I will not be crossing this ball. But let's find out. I might do. Who knows? Chair. Simple pass into Coley. Coley. Look at that run from Linden. I think he's just offside. And I don't think it'll matter too much. I lost the ball anyway. It went out for a corner. Uh, but it's gone all the way to the second half. My word. It jumped all the way to the second half here. Dykes is currently offside, mate. You could get yourself onside. That'd be nice. But Rayan Coley might not need him. Coley with a goal. Love that from you, Rayan, mate. Good to see him getting a few more minutes and on the score sheet when he gets his chance as well. Sideshow Bob bags a goal again as we saw a lovely shot of his ankles there for some reason but great to see us back on the score sheet great to see Rowan Coley as I say getting a few minutes and getting a few chances as well but lovely stuff there lovely celebration as well around the young lad but uh you can see at the moment it is all QPR right now it is all us we are getting every single opportunity is our way and hold on a second Armstrong has been brought on and although he didn't quite score look who's there to pick up the pieces he bags himself a brace oh Coley's loving the FA Cup right now but mate that strike off that ball to Armstrong was filthy hit the bar nearly went in not quite a Fran Frank Lampard moment it was rightly not giving us a goal this time but uh, yeah lovely lovely stuff Rayan Coley bagging himself a brace which is absolutely fantastic 10 minutes ago and FC Wimbledon or AFC Wimbledon get their first chance at a highlight here i'm not gonna i'm not gonna write them off just yet you never know man if they get two chances all it takes is you know a penalty being given or something and it's problem town but thankfully they gave us the opportunity to um treat that as a counter so when they tackled me that was the chance over but uh, another chance here for wimbledon can they do anything with it i'm gonna just try and cut the chance off nice and early lovely stuff oh kenneth powell doesn't quite keep it it's going to, again, give me the chance to counterattack here, which is quite nice of them. Thank you, yeah, I appreciate that. Let's see if we can build from this. It'd be nice to get, like, a bit of a, I guess, a, a build-up play goal, uh, which doesn't quite work because I absolutely waste it. But is that going to be full-time? It is 2-0. Absolutely lovely stuff. A Coley brace. I don't know how many people would have predicted that one to come in, but a Coley brace, you can see the crowd absolutely <laughs> ecstatic. They're all sat there. Nobody could care less. Lovely stuff, boys. 2-0 and a huge, huge win in the highlights and i'm saying huge because highlights normally do me dirty fa cup game done for now and the brace netted by coley you love to see it mate lovely stuff indeed do we have anything else okay so that's chair reaching his potential for the season let's have a very quick look 76 i'm okay with that he's currently playing at a 79 but 76 in the championship i'm absolutely okay with that i just thought it's worth noting that as uh as it came through but a loan offer here for Stephen Baller, we are going to accept the loan, send him out on loan. That'd be fantastic. And a transfer offer for Stephen Duke McKenna. They're offering us a 30 year old cam. Um, you know what? I'm going to negotiate because I don't want the. Uh, actually, can I delegate? Can I just say, yeah, no swap player. Cheers, mate. Uh, let's just go 440 and I'll start accepting things at around 350. I think that's fair player on his way out and i'm fairly sure that's going to be archer our first departure of the transfer window but some good money and he's going to move off to watford i don't know if he'll get too many minutes there but four hundred eighty thousand pound is very very helpful for potentially bringing a player in uh which we'll be going and having a look at in a second and it's an a rating on the sale yes okay having a little look at some players we could potentially look to bring in early doors i think what would be super, super helpful to address early on would be another bit of rotation in the fullback situation. Now, was recommended Bueno, far too expensive, sadly. Uh, Leif Davis could be a shout. We're still scouting him, I believe. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll get a bit more of an idea. But sat at 1.9, that's quite a lot to spend on somebody that could potentially become rotation that's sort of what we're looking to sign here uh craft could be great but it's a lot of weekly wages and again 1.9 uh is probably a little bit too much at the moment a bit rich for our blood right now but uh, it's just kind of tough to find an option because i don't think going in for adoram Adra adoramola i probably shouldn't sign him because i can't say his name um but it's maybe not the right kind of signing because lakesh is a already high rater higher rated than him i cannot speak this evening my word um i'm a little bit torn i don't really know boys 
where to go here. I'm not going to go for these free agents. I might actually just remove them after this anyway, just so I don't feel tempted to. Um, I am a little bit torn, boys. I'm not entirely sure which way to go here. Moat could be a good shout, but we get Moat next season. This is the pre-contract sort of situation here, so that's worth considering. We do also have a possibility in Connor Chaplin. Now, the thing with Connor Chaplin is I think we bring him in to start alongside someone. Uh, obviously, he can play Cam. We could convert him up to striker, but we'll work that one out when we get there. Uh, Raksaki, I think, is a great player, but is far too much for now. Uh, a Bowie, kind of the same situation. Caden Jackson is still a maybe. Uh, obviously, 29. I think he's around 62 rated, so we could look to bring him in, but I don't think he's going to be too much of an improvement on things. Um, Lise Mousse maybe as an option to bring through. I mean, I reckon we could pick him up for around 800k, and that as a backup striker could be a really good shout. Um, isn't slow. Shooting's okay. I think that could be a play, boys. I think maybe Lise Mousse could be a shout. Um... And I think it's quite a unique one. It's quite an interesting one, bringing him, bringing him back to England to see what he can do. I'm going to go scout a couple more left backs because I feel like left and right backs, just somebody to come in and, and maybe do as a job as a rotation fullback is going to have to be the play. Okay, I've sent out the scout to look at a couple of other options and we'll see if some of those come back in time with potential people to look at here. Um now, Jimmy Dunn, I don't want to sell. I'd like to keep hold of Jimmy Dunn. And two two mil would be good. Like, I could probably ask for 2.5 and probably be given, like, two mil after that sale. But I'm happy with Jimmy Dunn. I like Jimmy Dunn. I've got no reason to sell Jimmy Dunn, so I'm not going to. Um, now, we've been offered 440, which I'm going to accept. Um, and what I'll also do is delegate this here. Ask for 530 and start it at 440 so we know that they're at least hopefully going to match the previous offer uh, and park i'm not going to sell however i will accept a loan to buy oh not a loan to buy a loan i'll accept a loan see what they say dexter park mate i think he's got a good potential for us here Kleber cabral also potentially going out on loan we've also had a two-year loan accepted for alfie lloyd and we've also had a short-term loan accepted for hamzad cargbo hopefully both go out and get some uh good game time we can see some players departing uh, i don't know if it'll be a bunch of them or not but cabral off on his sixth month loan to Notts county absolutely fine with me uh again just hopefully get some good game time that'll be nice so uh Cray crayover so i'm gonna try and say that 810 is what they have gone for and you know what I'll take 810,000. I have a feeling we spent a bit more than that um, in real life, but that's fine. And 450, honestly, if Duke McKenna goes to either, that's nice. Uh, but between the two of them, we're probably after uh, the club take their bit. We've probably got about a million there, so that's actually really helpful. And that there, I think, is Duke McKenna on his way out. Oh, no, it's Alfie Lloyd, although it could be a number of players going at the same time. So Lloyd out for two years to, uh, I think it was Newport County. And yeah, Stephen Duke McKenna has been sold 440,000. Duke McKenna. Big fan, but uh, yeah, sadly, I think in this save, you weren't going to get too many minutes. But time to take a little bit of a break from all the transfers, ins, and, well, mainly outs, but hopefully some ins on their way. And let's get into our game against Millwall, our strongest 11. Everyone's fit. I might as well. I've also got a week until the next game anyway. Is this our third game at home? Is this them arriving at the underground of Loftus Road that doesn't exist? Or are we at the Den? Uh, we are at Loftus Road. That's three home games. We'll absolutely take that, boys. But yeah, this is, I think, going to be a bit of a tough one because the way that Mill will play in-game are a bit of a nightmare. I won't lie to you. So we're going to have to be at our very best, boys. Come on, you ours. Chair trying to burst through here. Going to look down and find Linden. Linden going to look up and find Ilias. Ilias, can you just get it past your man? He's not going to be able to. He's going to have to turn. Finds Linden on the edge. Linden, can I maybe get a strike away? No, he got tackled first. That's unfortunate field with the ball high up here going to find Armstrong Armstrong's going to look down and find Willock Willock can he get that first time strike yes he can and he finds the top corner as well lovely bit of play from the boys there really really nicely done and Chrissy Willock with a fantastic finish as well right in that poster stamp in that top corner fantastic goal from the boys really nice bit of play it was well won in the middle of the park with a combination of Clark Salter and Field picking the ball up in a bit of a robust tackle in the middle but it was one fair and square and we found a lovely finish there to finish the move off as well Chrissy Willock just 
absolutely lamps it into that uh, top corner there. Lovely stuff indeed. It wasn't quite the poacher sub that I thought it was, but it's in the back of the net. That's what matters. 11 minutes in, six goals and 27 for Chris Willock. And it's 1-0. Kenneth Powell bringing this ball forward here confidently. Our left back just bursts forward, finds a lovely pass to Armstrong, who finds a lovely goal. Biokowski, I'm assuming it is in net, having an absolute... Me oh no, he's moved, hasn't he? You know what? It doesn't matter. It's 2-0, boys. And the form today is absolutely phenomenal in front of goal. Sinclair Armstrong having the episode of his life right now. You'd think it's Armstrong Army because he is carrying this team at the moment. Four goals in the two games so far today and nearly five uh, if you consider, well, nearly six, the penalty that I didn't let him take. And then the uh, the shot that hit the bar in the FA Cup game. But boys, absolutely flying right now. And it's 2-0 after 17. Mill will bring the ball forward here. Got to defend it carefully. Really nice pass in. Bielkowski beating at his near post. You can't be beating there, mate. Biel wait, Biel I'm now thinking of the wrong man. It bloody B Labrovich, boys. Like I say, I'm tired. It's now nearly half past one. I'm ready for bed, boys. But... Here, half past one, half past 12. I can't even read a clock now. Uh, it's uh, it's not good there from Labrovic. B is close base. It's one of those, if you just stand, you just stand where you were, you block it. But it's another high scoring game, boys. Just like the first, uh, it's three goals in the first 25 minutes. Chair brings it forward. Going to try and find Linden. Does so. Linden going to take this one himself. Can he? Yes, he can. Absolutely top bins right in that corner. Absolutely glorious finish from the Scotsman. And now, boys, it's 3-1. The two-goal lead is restored. You know what it is? I think it's that I'm using uh, silver players a little bit more often in Ultimate Team now because of the Armstrong Army. And we're starting to find wins in that. Maybe I'm just starting to get things ticking a little bit now. But it's a lovely finish. It just has a little nick off the post there to find the back of the net. But 3-1 and, uh, mate, it's goals galore today. Oh, Millwall bringing this ball round quite nicely. Bradshaw shots blocked, but Nisbet finds the back of the net. And it's 3-2, boys. It is goals going in at both ends. A five-goal thriller 30 minutes in. I don't know what to say, boys. I mean, it, it's kind of a good thing that we're not just absolutely walking away with games. I mean, we had a very comfortable first game, even though we conceded. But it has to be said, it's I, I like that we're not just flying away with it because I think otherwise people would call for the things to be changed again. And I think it makes sense with the way that we've got the sliders right now, I think is where the game is most fun to play because it's still a challenge, but it doesn't feel impossible. So I'm, I'm happy with them where they are, uh, but it does lead to some pretty high scoring games at the moment, but it's three to cook plays a lovely ball there to Willock and Willock's going to first time pass it into Linden. What a touch that is from Linden Dykes. The pass to Armstrong didn't end up happening. It was Biakowski in, in goal still. Cooper nearly finds his own goal there. I I tried to lay it off with chair because I didn't think he was going to get the shot away, but it was well blocked and defended from the uh, the Millwall back line in the end. But that was very nearly a goal. Chair now down to Armstrong. Armstrong into Linden. Linden going to try and find Sinclair again. Plays it back. Chair is going to fall back to Sinclair. Armstrong is booted off the pitch there by Millwall. Not quite the half-time whistle if that's what they were aiming for to kick it off for half-time. But Cook plays it to Armstrong. Going to play it now. Nil. I can't even speak. Into chair. Chair doesn't quite get the ball across. And that'll probably be all she wrote. I apologise for my absolutely abhorrent ability to discuss, say words and communicate what I mean. I'm a tired boy, so I apologise. But I wanted to make sure I got this video out for you guys. So I'm very, very sorry. But half time, very happy with the, the general vibe of things. A couple of silly chances to concede. Although he was at fault for the first, I don't think Labrovic could do too much about the second. Uh, so will not give him too much slack for it. We're going to bring on Richards now coming on for Ilias Chair just because of that stamina you can see is a little bit on the tired side. We have got a week between now and the next game, but I don't want to run players more tired than they have to be. So let's get into the second half, boys. Hopefully more goals, but hopefully, hopefully it's uh, in one direction. Let's find out. No, we'll bring the ball forward here. Kenneth Powell with work to do. Forces them all the way back here, and it went off the pitch as well. We really did a, a good enough job there, Kenneth Powell, of seeing them not just back, but out. Andre Dizel going to have to turn back and find someone. He tries to lay it off the field, does so pretty well. Kenneth Powell going to play the switch all the way across here. Lovely ball, that is, all the way to Willoku. First time, he's going to play it to Ozzy. Ozzy going to try and get it in there, but I didn't realise Armstrong had run away from it. That was a lovely bit of play, but I've really not paid attention to where our strikers were. Oh, Cook with work to do here. Fleming is going to try and get through. Cook initially wins it. Clark Sorter does a good job of covering as well. Both centre-backs there getting involved and getting that one away. 
Dezel bringing it forward now. Dezel going to try and play over the top here. You know what? If that was a ball to Armstrong, it maybe would have been a better shout. I say that. It's fallen to Linden. And Linden at the moment, our strikers are not missing a chance. They are getting that ball forward and they are punishing teams for making mistakes. I was saying I wanted it through to Armstrong if I'd have thought about it because Armstrong runs onto those and has a bit more pace. But Linden being as persistent as he is, follows the man, waits for the mistake, gets the ball, finds the space and finds his brace. Lovely stuff from our flying Scotman. And at 70 minutes on, I probably should have actually made changes as that went in, but I'll make some changes now for when the ball goes off. Cook off for Dunn. Uh, that's just for stamina. Same with Dixon Bonner coming on. Uh, let's give Coley some minutes. We'll rest Armstrong. He's had a blinder today. He really has been probably one of the most important impactful players in uh, in the team today but let's then bring on Smith to round it up that's all the changes lovely stuff Coley now going to pick up this ball and try and make a run himself here. he's uh, probably riding off the high of that FA Cup brace and oh it's unlucky to try and find that ball through to to Linden there would have been lovely I maybe could have backed him to go on his own his R1 dribbling is quite nice Paul Smith we know what he is about and he's going to just open up the pace down this right hand side here just absolutely zips past his man is anyone making a run Linden could have bagged his own hat-trick after Armstrong got one as well today. Could have had both strikers with a hat-trick. Would have been quite nice. But he's going to play a lovely ball in there from Aussie. Doesn't quite fall to Linden. Only a couple of minutes left on the clock here. So we'll just let this play out a little bit and see if we can win this off him. Come on, win that. Well done, Paul Smith. Oh, I was just going to lay it off to Coley. And look, Dykes and him there both jogging on the spot, chomping at the bit to try and find the back of the net. But another high-scoring game. Sadly, a few more conceded than I would have liked. But when our strikers are in this kind of form and as prolific as they have been today, you can kind of allow a couple of mistakes at the back. But I'd rather not have them there personally. But another great game, another high amount of goals and another win. Another really, really good result for us there, boys. And it sees us up to seventh now, just two points off of sixth. But we've been here before and it's not ended phenomenally for us. But the less said about that, the better, I think. Uh, just to give you a bit more of an update on the whole table, just because I've not done that today. Uh, Leeds sat on 62 with Leicester on 60 and they are eight points clear of third place Southampton. My God, I have not got my speaking teeth in today. But Preston on 43, us just outside of that on 41. And you can see those teams now, there's a, a little bit of a gap appearing between the bottom three and the people around 17th or so, because that was, you know, a win could see some teams all the way up to like 18th. But right now, a win for Plymouth would see them up to 20th if Rotherham and Stoke both drop points. But Ipswich, Sunderland, Plymouth, I mean, Ipswich and Sunderland have had an incredible time of things in real life. And it does make me think about a player that we could maybe look at if Sunderland are going to potentially struggle here. Now, obviously, in real life, many of that Ipswich team are going absolutely nowhere considering how well they're playing. And you could say the same for Sunderland, but it makes me think. Now, I know there's a level of realism here that just, just doesn't work, but they have this player... You might have heard of him and his brother, but Joby Bellingham, boys, there's no way he'd go down and play in League One. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have a look. I'm just gonna have a look. Okay, Burgos have come back and said they would consider a short-term loan for Park. Get him out on loan to the end of the season. I'm okay with that. Another departure here as Charlie Kelman does leave £810,000 added to the transfer budget or £810,000 what we got. We're apparently doing really good with these sales right now, uh, but I imagine we get a decent little percentage of that, maybe six hundred grand, five seven five, pretty close. So we are now set on £4 million. So we have gained an extra million. Now, still looking at some players. Uh, I have added a few players as some people I was looking at. As I said, I went and had a look at some other options. Sam Curtis, good potential young player uh, in the Irish League, uh, can play right back and centre back. So will be some good coverage. There's also Ruel Waters, probably saying that wrong, but again, right back and centre back will be some good coverage. Uh, Joshua Feeney, who's currently at Aston Villa, could be a good young centre back to bring through. Uh, we've had the report back for Leif Davis, 70 rated. I wouldn't say no to signing him. I think he could be a good little potential player, but we'll still consider that um, as a maybe. Uh, who else did it? Uh, did I scout? I've gone in for Daniel Gore as a scout, but he hasn't got his little sort of, uh, it's just the, the grey face on there, which is a bit disappointing for me. I quite like it when you can at least see um, either them or the sort of AI generated face. Joby Bellingham wouldn't be upset with that, but again, 
there is a level of non realism to that and then Matteo Joseph I'm fairly sure he's normally at Leeds but he's now signed for Luton just thought I'd give him a scout because I'm fairly sure he's a good little player could be a good person to maybe bring through and bring through with the likes of someone like an Armstrong just a thought another loan leaving and that is Barlock going out for his loan at FC Annecy I didn't read it I probably should have read it Dexter Park has completed his loan out to Bergeos six months. I'd be really interested to see how he does out on loan. I've got a really good feeling he's going to be a player for the future. I genuinely don't think clubs are listening to me. I, I don't want Bonner and I do not want to let Armstrong go. Go away. Okay, so I know we're now in our transfer window and I know I've not really made much in the way of signings. Uh, the squad obviously has thinned out more than anything else. I've been saying how we need to add some depth and all I've done is thin the squad. So being aware of that and knowing that I need to make some signings, I need to make sure that those signings are right and that we bring the right people in, which is why I've not rushed at things. I want to make sure if we're committing to a signing, it's a signing that we're happy with and it's signing the right person. Um, there is one signing that I am pretty confident with and it's going in for either Ruel Walters or Sam Curtis. I've had a little look at both in like in real life, looking at their careers and stuff and just having a little look at a couple of things. And, and I think Walters, I think it's a relatively cool signing. I think it's levels of realism to it. He's worth a million. So I think it's, it's a relatively sensible pickup. I'm not going for someone like crazy high rated. I'm sort of guessing his rating is going to be like low 60s, maybe like 62 or so. So kind of in fitting with our bench, but has got good potential to get upgraded because he's only 19. So I think I'm going to go in for it, boys. I'm going to I'm going to low ball a little bit. I'm going to go in and offer Arsenal. Let's let's start at like a 700,000 Arteta. Let's just start low, see if there's any wiggle room. 800k is a great response my friend i'm gonna just throw 700 at you again and see if you're willing to just go down to my boys look all right i might make some mistakes with with stumbling on my words every now and again i might every now and again just not quite get a gameplay right or, or or defend a little bit badly but you can't question my negotiation skills boys Seven hundred and twenty thousand. his market value is a million i'm absolutely flying here ruel walters if nothing else if he doesn't end up being the guy for us I think he's somebody we can loan out and sell on for a profit, boys. I'm turning this club into something smart, all right? That is what I'm here for. Let's offer him Spradic. He's fine with it. Great. I want you here for the long term. I want you here for five years. Big, beefy contract. No release clause. You're not going to tell me your wages. I was really hoping you'd tell me your wages, friend. Okay, I'm going to offer him. Begovic is on like seven and is 71 rated. I'm going to offer him four and oh, four and 50. Four and 50. Ah, oh, that's not what I meant. Hello. Didn't mean that. Okay. I'm going to give him a signing on bonus of £50,000 after I stop messing around with it. And I'll give him a wage of five. That's what I'm going to go for, boys. I don't want to mess this up after getting a really good deal initially. He's fine with it. Absolutely fantastic. Fine with me. I think this is a really cool signing, personally. I think this is a really, really, really good, interesting signing. I don't think, I don't think I've ever seen anyone sign Ruel Walters on a career mode. I definitely haven't seen it um, for any QPR career modes. But I think there's levels of realism to this. Good rotation at centre back. Also good rotations at right back uh, to sort of offer that. Uh, rotation for someone like Aussie but our first signing through the door I'm absolutely okay with it um, and yeah more to come because obviously I've not spent all of our money we've got quite a bit left over so let's have a little look 720,000 I'm confident that's an A because realistically his market value is a million I've absolutely smashed that I reckon they're going to say cheapest we could have got is 800k I reckon I've absolute 660 getting a bin there's no way I was signing him for 660 but 63 rated I'm absolutely okay with that, boys. We've got our first signing uh, of the window. Obviously, Labrovic was a bit different. First signing of the window, Ruel Walters, and we've still got about three and a bit million left to spend. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm not going to make those signings right now. I want to get your guys' thoughts on the people I've suggested to you. Let me know what you think about the keeper situation. 
I'm kind of homing in on Carrius. I'm going to be entirely honest with you. He's 30, so he's not ridiculously old for, for EA to decide he's just going to get terrible. Obviously, I have got these guys being scouted as well. Um, so these guys will come back with actual ratings as well. Alternatively, we go for like an Austin or or we go for like um, an Anang. Although I think they've now signed new contracts, which is quite annoying. Um, or am I being really stupid? I might be being really stupid. No. I can actually sign them as it is now. So I could I could go for one of the younger guys or we could go for a Carius, uh, 30 years old. I'd imagine like 74 rated, but let me know your guys' thoughts. Obviously, we need probably, um, I I'm going to say we probably need another striker option, especially now that we have loaned out, um, uh, what's his name, Park. Uh, we've got Jackson as a maybe. Uh, but the only issue with Jackson is we don't get until next season. So actually, I'm going to say no, let's not go with Jackson because we can't sign him until next season. But we do need another striker. Um, we could maybe go in for Joseph, 1.6 million. Um, it could be that we go and bring him in and have him as our rotation striker off the bench. Um, I, I think it wouldn't be a bad move. We'd need to train him a little bit in the skill department, but we can get there. And then let me know, boys, what we do with this rotation midfielder. I mean, if we sign a Bellingham, uh, we've got a Chaplin as a maybe. Um, if we think we can wait, we could pick up Moet on a free. Um, as Gore that I'm currently scouting. Or do we go a little bit more balls to the wall and sign someone like a Ahamada, spend a bit more to bring in some first team quality? Let me know your thoughts, boys. But I'm going to round that one up there. A little bit of a weird episode, and I apologize that it's a bit of a strange one. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do a like on the video. supports me, the video, the channel, and the series out a whole bunch. If you're new, hit the sub button and turn notifications on to be told anytime that we upload a video. If you want to check out our live streams, it's Hersey Games over on Twitch. There's a link down below along with our TikTok and our Twitter. Feel free to go check them out. Share them some love. Thank you very much in advance. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. I've been Tom. You guys have been awesome. And I'll see you very soon. Look after yourselves. And of course, wash your hands. Take care.